Hello and welcome to Trade Talk in Depth. I'm John Harlow with the Trade Talk News Service. Today we're speaking with Major General David Ralston, Commanding General of the U.S. Army Field Artillery School in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Sir, thank you very much for joining me today on Trade Talk in Depth. Okay. Lieutenant Colonel John Nagel and Colonel Paul Yingling proposed in the July August Field Artillery Magazine that field artillery take the lead in counterinsurgency operations. Is that something you see for the future for field artillery soldiers and officers? Yeah, that was an interesting concept, I think, that they came up with. And it's one that we probably need to give some uh, serious look to. But again, with precision munitions coming on board now, I think we're going to be back doing more standard missions. And uh, with lethal and non-lethal fires, um, we've got a pretty full plate right now. And we're expanding that to take a look at, uh, again, more ways to use non-lethal fires in the fight. So their proposal is interesting. We'll just have to take a look at it. Uh, I don't want to dismiss it, but uh, you know, right now we've got a pretty full plate of uh, lethal and non-lethal fires. Transformation of the modular force, new technology, the fire center of excellence looking into taking the lead at coin operations is a lot on the plate for field artillery. On top of that, add into the Army force generation model. How do you prepare for all of those missions plus educate officers, NCOs, and soldiers? There's a real balance to that. At, uh, at the end of the day, at the school, they have to leave here with the technical uh, ability to, to do fires uh, and process fires accurately. That, that's something that we just we have to make sure that they understand and can do. Then with that, we have added um, where we could the other coin-operated kinds of uh, skills sets that, that they might need to do non-lethal fires. So it, it's a bit of a balance, and we have to work it. We have added a lot of uh, non-lethal fire uh, scenarios and, and learning and teaching into the school, and we're trying to balance that uh, lethal and non-lethal uh, uh, roles for the fire and field artillery. Sir, if a young person is thinking of enlisting to become a field artillery soldier, an officer looking to choose their branch, what kind of sales pitch would you give them to join field artillery? You know, I, I think the field artillery is really kind of an interesting field right now. It's got some promising developments coming in the way of FCS um, and the new munitions that we're bringing on, the ability to do full spectrum. I think the, the real uh, beauty of uh, field artillery in that is the diverse roles that they can do. I mean, it's anywhere from uh, being a fort observer with a special forces unit all the way to, uh, uh, to a missile unit firing in, in support of the maneuver uh, commander. So, I mean, there is a broad spectrum of things. You can be with the light infantry, with heavy infantry, with armor, um, and, and that field artilleryman can really find his niche where he really wants to spend that time, and uh, it is a, an array of opportunities that's provided to him. So I think more than any other branch, he has that ability to, to, to uh, touch a lot of things and to find out really where he, he wants to serve in the Army. Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom have changed the way we fight and the way we train. What are some of the major changes in teaching and training that have been implemented here at the Field Artillery School based on lessons learned in Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, one of the things that we uh, did that was fairly innovative uh, was this a rapid redesign program where we got the students in and we gave them problem-based learning and said uh, uh, help us redesign the course. So we had the students who were recently back from OIF and OEF help us redesign the captain's career course and we put in a lot of problem-based uh, learning so that it, it is a real interactive exchange. I, I, I think it's a much better way of teaching it than the old PowerPoint uh, uh, presentations that we have before, and we're trying to do that more and more. We have now advanced that into the non-commissioned officer uh, academy and the warrant officers. Sir, there have been many reports that training is easier and soldiers aren't of the highest quality. Here at Fort Sill, you're responsible for basic combat training, advanced individual training, an NCO academy, basic officer leadership course. Is the training easier, and can you talk about the quality of new soldiers you see coming through the training base? I think we've held the standards uh, pretty well, and in fact, if, if the standards have changed, they've actually increased. We really have tried to add relevancy and rigor. If you go through the basic training now, it is actually harder. It is, we have added rigor to that. Uh, we've held the standards, too, uh, so that uh, uh, when you graduate from basic training here, 
you have met or exceeded the Army standards. And it's the same way with BOLIP too, this basic officer leader course too. Uh, all lieutenants uh, from all branches, even come to Benning, are here. Uh, we work very closely with Benning to make sure that the uh, POIs are the same. And uh, it is a great course. I, I wish I would have had that uh, as I came out. And we are now making uh, basic officer and basic enlisted training uh, relevant and uh, so that when they leave here, they're ready for the fight. Is there anything else you'd like to share with TRADOC News Service? Just that I'm really proud of the field artillery and the missions that they're doing. I, again, we're doing a lot of standard uh, uh, artillery missions, a lot of firing in OAF and OEF, uh, but we're also doing a lot of non-standard missions. And artillerymen across the force really have uh, come to the plate and done whatever the Army has asked them to do. And in addition, we are really now bringing precision munitions to the fight, scalable precision munitions that the maneuver commander can have uh, at his availability to use uh, in, the, in any type of a full spectrum fight. We complement the Air Force very well on that, and it's a new addition that is really going to assist the maneuver commander. He's going to own precision fires, and that is a great new benefit uh, to him as he uh, does his war fight. The other thing is that we are working hard with uh, uh, the joint community to make in Fort Sill the uh, joint fire center for the, um, for the Army. That and the ADA coming up, there's a lot going on at Fort Sill. We're really proud of it and we'll continue to, to push forward so that the Army can have the best artillerymen and air defenders here in the, in the future coming out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma. General Ralston, thank you very much for joining me today on Trade Dock In Depth. With the Trade Dock News Service, I'm John Harlow.